Hey everybody, Flash Notion here, back for some more Star vs. the Force of Evil. I hope you all had a wonderful Mother's Day yesterday, because, uh, yeah, now we're back. <laughs> um, so yeah, episodes 5 and 6. Last time, according to the <laughs> list of episodes, we had a bunch, of, a bunch of very interesting stuff. Moon got her memory back and just decided to fuck off uh, with River. They're probably fucking in the yurt. <laughs> um, then uh, Romulus and Eclipsa got into a fight, and Star had to defuse the situation, and it seems like Eclipsa is going down a dark route. Then we had an adventure in uh, in Hecapoo's world, and it was pretty funny. And then we had a much more serious episode with Tom's family, and that was that was also pretty fun. So a bunch of good 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 episodes last time. Uh, this time, if I scroll down a little bit, uh, I'm gonna. Okay, so we have yada yada berries, and that just reminds me of uh, that old Cartoon Network show. Uh, what is it like Chowder? Where uh, the one guy was just like rada 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 all the time, um, but I, I don't actually know what the berries are or what they will do. Um, but I'm imagining somebody's going to eat them and it's going to be a bad thing, or maybe they're questing for them. Either way, we then have down by the river, and in terms of star versus thinking of a river. Um, Oh, shit, I'm getting a bunch of notifications on Discord. I should probably mute that. Holy shit. What the hell? Oh, okay, yeah. That, that, that was... That, a cool thing that has been on hiatus for a while is coming back soon for... According to that Discord notification. But, uh, in order to avoid more notifications, I'm just going to, uh... Close it out. Um, right, so down by the river. Uh, there are two things that I can think of. The first is the episode where Star tried to run away and she met, like, this hair lady and it was weird. Um, and the other is, uh, that monster village that was by the dam, right? And they, uh, they had to deal with the river there. I don't know, or, oh, oh maybe it'll be the river as in Star's dad. I didn't even... Yeah, that, that didn't even cross my mind. Um, then we have the Ponyhead Show. Cock the gun, blast my brains out. Uh, that, that, that. <laughs> I do not want to watch another episode about Ponyhead. But we're going to, unfortunately. Whatever. And finally, Surviving the Spider Bites. Oh, right, the spider bites are, um, they're like a family, right? There, there was a princess spider bite. She had, like, a giant one on her head that, uh, the slime guy cured uh, back in, uh, back in the episode where we learned about Meteora. Like, that was, that was, that seems like a while ago, um, in terms of the episode count. But, yeah, um... The spider bite family is probably diplomatically very important to Muni, and therefore they're going to have to deal with that. <laughs> um, that should be fun. Maybe. Maybe it won't be. Who knows? Uh, but yeah, interesting set coming forward, and uh, we should get started. So, starting in three... Two, one. Okay. A little bit longer of a wait there than I thought it was going to be, but I got distracted for a second. So the first one... The first one is a really cool episode because you can tell that Disney went, we can't do a proper 
you know, attempted murder episode. Um, or rather attempted assassination episode. Um, like you can name drop assassins and whatnot, but you can't actually have somebody die properly from like poison or whatever. So they came up with this plot of like being turned to stone, which is honestly worse (laughs) depending on whether or not they're conscience conscious. Uh, the fact that like they, uh, apparently, you know, recover from the situation implies a certain amount of consciousness remains. Um, yeah, the, uh, the whole plot there with the assassins and the mystery and whatnot is, it's pretty great. But, we never did find out who the culprit was. That's, uh, that's something we're gonna have, that might be revealed in the future. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's just, just very, uh, very cool. Um, and, uh, yeah, uh, I can understand why Eclipsa is being targeted, but, uh, that, um, the, the second episode, we're, we're gonna hold off on, hold off on talking about that. Uh, let's skip to the second half here. So the Ponyhead show was every bit as awful as I thought it was going to be. But, but Eclipse's song was pretty great. Um, I like Eclipsa. I really do. She's such a cool character, and the things that she is trying to do, she you you can tell she's trying to be a good person. She's trying to to be accountable. She's trying to do the right thing, but. She just wants her husband back, and it's complicated. And she's getting to the, she's gonna get to the point where she has to choose between Globgor and the Mumins. And I have a feeling she's gonna pick Globgor, and it's it's not gonna end well. Um. So yeah, <laughs> that's that's about all there is to that. I mean, uh, I think Eclipse in a power suit is gonna be the thumbnail. That, that just would make sense. It was a really, you know, out, out of context, you're like, what the fuck? <laughs> so, yeah. Um, and then, yeah, we, we really did the, the ending there with the little girl. That was, that was adorable. And um, I think it's actually a really good way to show that, like, a lot of, a lot of uh, the hate for Eclipsa does come from just simple prejudice. Like, obviously, again, we'll, we'll talk about the second episode in a minute, but, like, for the most part, it seems like the people, the amount of humans that are being negatively in- impacted by Eclipse's actions is relatively small, and therefore, most of, most of the hate towards her is purely, uh, purely prejudice, built-in prejudice. Um, and having... This little girl, uh, you know, like the song and give it an upvote. Like that, uh, it's a good representation of how like young people who aren't raised with that kind of prejudice, who don't know or who haven't been taught to be like that, they can very easily, you know, not so not fall victim to it. They can just see things as they are, and yeah, I mean children are pure and all that. Like, sometimes children are pure terror, but like for the most part um, most children really are innocent and pure. Like, they have to be taught to be racist and prejudiced. Um, so, like it's, yeah, it's just a just a small thing. Um, and then the, the the Spider Bites episode. Oh, boy. Yeah, Star really blundered that one. <laughs> um, and, you know, I, I really would like to see the, the context that Eclipse is talking about. She says it's more complicated than just, oh, well, Glogor was a monster that ate people. Like, what else is there? What What's the context here? You know, was... 
was the things that he did retaliatory? You know, was was the whole blood of my enemies thing like like a an aesthetic that he put on similar similar to like Tom's family? Um, but like, I mean, the dance was cool, even if it represented something terrible. Uh, the the art looked cool, even if it represented something terrible. Um, the mugs, uh, you know, that, that's just like, wow, what an oversight. <laughs> um, but I mean, yeah, ca- accidentally casually insulting an entire culture is, and I'm talking about Star here, the, uh, towards the start, towards the spider bites, like, yeah, she, uh, she fucked up. Um, and then, uh. It's pretty cool that uh, Penelope is dating, uh, dating Slime. Like, I I thought I picked up on something like that in that episode, but I didn't know if uh, I didn't know if that uh, I didn't know if that continued. Oh yeah, Shast- Khan I I kn- I knew the name sounded familiar. Okay, so that he supposedly ate the ate Eclipse's ex husband. Hmm. I mean, all things considered, I don't see how uh, that like I, I feel like that would have been. Yeah, there, there's got there definitely has to be more context to that. Then I feel like that's uh, I feel like that would be something Star would know would have learned in like history class, mu- mu- Muni history class, if uh, if it were true. Um. But. Yeah, the uh, the ending there with the Book of Spells and Star lying, that's not going to end well. Eclipse is going to... If Eclipse finds out about that, I'm pretty sure she's going to be like, how, how, how dare you be a hypocrite and tell me that you can't trust me when you're the one who's lying to me here? I asked you and I expected you to be honest with me because I've been honest with you and you're lying and... Uh, hiding hiding the truth. Like, yeah, Eclipse is not going to be happy when she finds out about it because they wouldn't have introduced that idea, that plot point, without it being important. Um, so, yeah, that's uh, that's not uh, not cool. Um, I forget what the context was of her finding that piece. Let's see. Ludo, when did Ludo burn the book? Uh, was it right? Book be gone, season three, episode two a. Okay, so that's when the book was destroyed. When was the book found? Would have been, would have been in uh, much further down, actually. Wow, a lot further down. Deep dive here, probably, right? No. Even further? No. That doesn't make any sense. When would it have been? Earlier, right? Then. Where is it? Okay, so it's even earlier than that. Okay, what the fuck? When did she find it? Seriously. Uh, yeah, I have no idea. When, <laughs> okay, I, I can't find the point where Star actually discovered the remains of the book, but yeah. Um, glad we're bringing that back around. The book it's interesting how just irrelevant the book has become. Like, I'm glad they're bringing it back, but it, it, it is interesting. Okay. All that said, it's time to talk about the probably the biggest episode in this set. Um, the, the second one, Down by the River. Oh, boy. So, there's a lot of applicability 
to this episode. Um, the main one being that <sighs> there's been a lot of calls to... I'm going to put this. I don't know the full extent of the situation, but I know that here in the United States... Native Americans have been traditionally, well, not traditionally, but like historically pushed out of their native, te- their actual native territories and, you know, suffered quite a few atrocities at the hands of the United States government and military. And even before that, you know, British and other country European colonizers, um, it's, uh, you know, the United States history is kind of fucked up. Uh, we're, we're, it, a lot of times our history classes try to, do try to gloss over it. They try to present us as, uh, uh present these things as like, oh, well, they, they just happened, you know? They, they don't go too much into the reality of the situation. And in the modern day, you know, oh, come on. Who the fuck is calling me? Four, six, I don't even know who the fuck that is. No. Anyways, <laughs> ignoring that that just happened. Um, right, so, modern day, there have been a certain amount of calls, serious or otherwise, to give back the land. To return territories that traditionally belonged to Native American groups to those groups that are still around, at least. The ones that have survived. Sort of. (laughs) Um, And, you know, there's all kinds of problems with that. I mean, after all, most... If if you actually go back and look at the history of those tribes, a lot of the times they probably ousted other people from their lands and killed them in order to get those lands. Like... You know, conquering new territory is not an exclusively European idea. It it happens all over the world. The expansion and whatnot is... It's just a thing that's been built into human history. Not... I mean, that probably sounds bad. I'm not trying to justify it. Obviously, it's terrible when anybody gets forced out of their home. And when they're killed, tortured, otherwise exploited, etc., I'm just saying that there are there are problems with making those kinds of restorations and one of them is the question of well what do you do with the people that are currently living there with the infrastructure that is currently there um you know do you redraw borders that sort of thing and right here we we see that in action where Eclipse had just handed down a basically an executive order to return all monster homes and territories to those monsters and to the people that historically, traditionally lived there. But she did so without the necessary follow-up. She didn't make sure that the Mumins who are being displaced are given the things that they need in order to continue. Um... And I don't know what's going to happen with Moon and River's little uh, forest kingdom here, but I doubt it's going to be all sunshine and roses. I'm pretty sure there's going to be a conflict between Eclipse's new kingdom and Moon's new kingdom. Um, Whether that's as simple as humans versus monsters, or maybe it's more akin to... uh, um, maybe it's maybe it is just kingdom versus kingdom. Who knows? Um, I I think it is worth noting that you know we go back to the yada yada episode there. Like there are also monsters that do not trust Eclipsa because she's human and because like she's trying to do things and she's being undermined by people around her that make her and that makes her look bad. Um fucking Manfred like uh, 
Seriously, Manfred is just an ass. Leave him, leave him in stone. But yeah, it's a uh, it's a complicated situation, and you know, I'm I'm not a above call or like I I'm not opposed to the idea of people being shall we say forcibly relocated you know um but you have to do it you have to do it in a way that when it's all said and done everyone is maybe not happy but everyone is not hurting Right. Um, if you just leave people out to dry, you know. Yeah. Um, I mean, my opinion. First things first. Like, we should start by just actually getting everybody in housing. Then we can worry about where they're being housed after that. But like, I mean, the housing. Even when we're first getting them in there, we should try and like. Try and make it so that people are being put into housing that fits them, you know. Don't put a family of four in a single-bedroom apartment. But, like, yeah. Just get rid of homelessness first, then worry about... uh, Then worry about making reparations and shuffling people around. (sighs) But, yeah, it's complicated, and it's obviously... Eclipse is not thinking things through as much as she can. She's trying to do what's right, but it's hurting people. And all of that's going to just contribute to the thing with Globgor, where it's like, if she has to choose between the Mewmans and Globgor, and the Mewmans are upset at her because she tried to do the right thing but messed it up, like, she's going to have less incentive to choose them. Um... As, as she said in the Ponyhead Show episode, she'd rather be hated for being herself than liked for a lie. And I respect that, but, like, if who you are is, is hurting other people, yeah, there's, that's gonna, that's gonna be a problem. But yeah, another good set of episodes, um... Aside from the Ponyhead stuff, I don't dislike any of it. Like it, it, it mo- the rest of the stuff is uh, pretty fun, pretty good. A lot of, a lot of humor, a lot of uh, serious moments as well, though. Um, some good progression on plot lines. I mean, we're only six episodes into the season, and holy fuck, a lot has already happened with Eclipsa and Star and everything. I forget how fast paced this show can be at times. Um, You know, as much as I kind of dislike the 11-minute format, I have to admit, when done right, it leads to stories that don't have any filler or fat. You know, we just get the necessary moments for character stuff, we get the necessary moments for plot stuff, maybe a little bit of humor and whatnot shoved in there, but it's fast-paced and it's... uh, you know, nothing unnecessary. And I definitely think Star Versus, at least right now, seems to be firing on all cylinders in that regard. There doesn't necessarily seem to be any episodes that are, um, that are filler. Maybe the Ransom Graham one from last week, but, yeah. Other- otherwise, I mean, this week there was no filler. <laughs> Not any. That... Like, each of these episodes seems significant and deserving of its place in the series. So, yeah. Great set. I enjoyed it. I hope you all enjoyed it as well, and I hope to see you all next time. But until then, bye bye